of the hour, 11 o'clock in Santa Barbara, California, where fielding offices are located. And we're so glad that you could join us. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, this event is perfect for anyone who is exploring universities, exploring programs, trying to find the right fit, or just wants to learn a little bit more about Fielding Graduate University. So we're so glad that you could be here with us today. This event is being recorded. So in order to mitigate distractions and make sure we have a pleasant experience for everyone, we encourage you to keep your microphone on mute, um, keep your video turned off. We do wanna make sure you get all of your questions answered. So as you'll see when we get to the agenda slide, we will certainly have time at the end of the presentation for your questions, but we don't want you to forget them. So please feel free to type them in the chat throughout the presentations. If we're not able to get the, to them uh, immediately, we will certainly address them towards the end when we get to the Q&A piece. This is part one of our virtual open house series, all about fielding. Why are we doing this? So you have so many options for pursuing your graduate education. So how do you decide which school is the right fit? As important as it is for us to get to know you, it is equally important for you to have the opportunity to get to know us. The fielding motto is change the world, start with yours. And it is our hope today that you walk away from this presentation with a greater understanding of what that means to us and what makes fielding unique. As an admissions professional, one of the questions I hear most often is, why should I attend your school? And you may get a different response from fielding advisors than you're used to. Instead of a bullet list of benefits, you, you're, you're going to hear, well, we don't know yet. Tell me about yourself. Together, we can determine if this is the right program, the right place, and the right time. So although today's presentation might be all about us, as you will hear from the panel today, your education and your experience is all about you. My name is Erica Fichter. I serve as Director of Recruitment at Fielding. I've been in my role for a little over a year and a half now, and I truly love what I do. Someone once asked me what I love about recruitment, and after thinking about this for a moment, I realized it's hearing the stories of our prospective students. It's learning about your experience, your resilience, and the trust that you place in us as admissions professionals to share your hopes and your dreams for graduate school. And I truly see my role as helping to catalyze change in people's lives and ultimately in the world as our graduates go on to make the communities and organizations they serve a better place. So why did we select these people to be on the panel today? We wanted you to get a sense of who, who you will work with before, during, and after your program so you know what to expect throughout the life of your journey. My team is here for you through the admissions process, but we want to, to get to know more about the people and the experience of our current students and alumni. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Lindsay Kahn, Director of Advising, to introduce herself and say hello. Hello, thank you for having me here today. My name is Lindsay Kahn. I am the Director of Advising, and uh, so I work with current students um, when once you're admitted into the program. I've been at Fielding for 10 years, um, and I just finished my doctorate in education, so um, you do not have to call me doctor, but uh, it is a, a fun new experience to be called doctor. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll talk a little bit more about some of the um, things that the advising office provides and, and other, um, other things about being a current student a little bit later. And Hillary? Hi, everyone. My name is Hillary Molina. I am the Director of Alumni Relations, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I get to share with you the opportunities you have to stay involved after you graduate. So I look forward to sharing more in this presentation. Thank you. So today, some of the topics we're going to cover is clearly about fielding. Uh, we'll go through some of the programs that we offer, well, all the programs that we offer, talk about what it means to be in a distributed learning environment. Uh, you'll hear about the support services, both before, during, and after the program. Uh, you'll hear all about alumni relations from Hillary, and then, as I mentioned, we will have time at the end for any questions that you may have. So one of the most important aspects of selecting a program is choosing a school that's the right fit 
The culture and the community will shape every aspect of your experience and network, both during your academic career and long after graduation. So first we want to introduce you to fielding leadership. Our current president is Dr. Katrina Rogers. Our provost and senior vice president is Dr. Monique Snowden. Our chief financial officer and vice president of administration is Prima Windukun. And our chief diversity offer, Tomas Leal, and distinguished senior advisor to the president, Dr. Orlando Taylor. At Fielding, we have two schools, the School of Psychology and the School of Leadership Studies. And I want to take a moment and introduce you to the department chairs and the leadership within each of these schools. Dr. Christine Jacqueline is the department chair for the School of Psychology. She's a licensed clinical psychologist with a consulting practice focused on forensic and neuropsychological evaluations. Dr. Jacqueline earned her undergraduate degree in psychology with a concentration in African studies at Northwestern University and she earned her PhD in clinical psychology at the University of Texas at Austin. After a career as a tenured professor at a research university, Dr. Jacqueline decided to focus her academic career on student development, research, and teaching of graduate students. So although Dr. Jacqueline was not able to be here live with us today, I'm very excited to announce that we do have Dr. Barbara Mink, who is the department chair for the School of Leadership Studies, and at this time, I'm going to turn it over to her to introduce herself to you and to talk about the history of fielding. Good, thank you very much, Erica. Um, I'm glad to be here with you on exploring some of the things around fielding. I've been with fielding several decades. And like a lot of people with fielding, uh, I have had other educational professional career. I've been a, a dean of two community colleges. I've been the faculty on three community colleges. I've taught graduate uh, doctoral work at the University of Texas, and also done uh, 30 plus years of international nonprofit and profit consulting. Uh, my degrees are, my three degrees are all from Duke University in North Carolina, undergraduate in math and geology, oddly enough, master's in math and education, and then a doctorate in higher educational leadership. So I am going to uh, talk you through some of the early history of Fielding since I knew a lot of the founders. And like I said, I've been with Fielding several decades. The founders of Fielding were three very prominent uh, social activists as well as educators, uh, Dr. Frederick Hudson, Halleck Kaufman, and Renata Tesh. Uh, they started Fielding as, a, as an alternative way to look at higher education. They, they felt like adults were not being honored in bringing their full self into higher education. Uh, next slide. So here's a picture. Uh, actually, the person there on, the, on my far left is Frederick Hudson. The next person is Halleck Hopfen. And unfortunately, Renata Tesh is not in that picture. But uh, they were looking at not only uh, a higher education program of looking at scholarship and academic excellence, but also looking at leadership. And as we say at Fielding, living on the hyphen between scholarship and practice. So we're asking folks to bring your practice into your doctoral studies so that your academic work informs your practice and your practice informs your academic studies. And we'll look at some of the, the values at Fielding and the mission. Okay, uh, this is a picture of our current president, uh, like Erica indicated, uh, Dr. Katrina Rogers. You can see that the, the mission of Fielding, there are several key words there. Interdisciplinary, we build a community of scholar practitioners. So you're gonna hear in this uh, episode here, how you started fielding, what some of the options are at fielding, and then Hillary Molina is gonna talk about how you stay connected with fielding and stay part of the community. The other key word is we have a distributed learning model so that at one time when we can get back to working face-to-face -face and in person, we'll have uh, regional sessions, cluster meetings, um, and more national sessions at several times a year. Right now we're doing most of our work virtually and having those kind of opportunities spaced around the throughout the year for our students to move forward in their doctoral studies and also to connect as a community. 
So we see ourselves as student driven. So our faculty don't ask you to do part of their uh, research work. They'll always ask you, what is your passion? What is your interest? How do you want to advance yourself professionally and personally? So that they look at combining courses for you and having a dissertation committee, which helps you advance your personal and professional goals. Next slide. And some of the values that Fielding uh, was based on and is still based on, we talked about that collaborative learning. So the faculty see themselves as co-learners with you. You can bring your whole self to Fielding. We're not asking you to leave part of yourself so at the door, so to speak. We're asking you to bring in your, your personal life, your professional life, your values, your interests. Fielding has a, a very strong value for social justice and social equity, and also experiential learning and praxis. Like I indicated before, we're here with uh, exemplary academic work, but we're also asking folks to how are you gonna use this? How are you gonna make a difference? I talked about colleagueship, obviously academic quality is extremely important to us. And we also, you know, enjoy the work. So we're hoping you'll bring your fun self and your energy to your fielding work. Some of the things around what we call the fielding difference versus conventional higher education, you can see there on the left-hand side of the slide, I've mentioned already learner-centered. So it's you focusing on where you want to take yourself personally, professionally. We look at issues and look at the academic rigor around examining those issues. We ask a lot of questions. We ask people to explore different ways of knowing. We ask people to, to learn with their full self. There's a lot of experiential learning in our fielding model. I've mentioned collaborative learning. We're not so rigorous in terms of separating down the disciplines as being interdisciplinary and integrative. We see ourselves as active learners and active co-learners with the students. So that a lot of people, when they finish their fielding work, talk about how this was not only transformational for themselves in terms of learning and making a contribution to the academy, but also their own personal transformation and professional transformation. So in some of the early history, and these are still pieces that um, are there, again, we're founded back in 74 in the Santa Barbara area, mentioned by Frederick Hudson, Halleck Hoffman, and Renata Tesh. And they also looked at what was happening in the world at that time around the changing demographics of higher ed and looking at how adults learn differently than adolescents or young people. One of the early people in our uh, fielding family who's fortunately no longer with us was a Dr. Malcolm Knowles, who a lot of you might know or remember as basically the father of adult education or andragogy as he called it. So looking at bringing yourself into that, developing a learning plan that's gonna help you develop personally and professionally. And again, uh, another history slide there is there's certain words that we, we look at and, and value at Fielding. So the rigor, we've talked about the academic rigor is there. We have a very supportive learning model, which I'm sure you're going to learn about some of the services that will support you in your doctoral studies or in the, your master's work or in your certificates. Flexibility, adult-centered, self-directed, in other words, having you come forward with what you're wanting to learn rather than saying, okay, what do you want me to read? What do you want me to regurgitate? We're asking you to come forward as an active participant in your own learning. We talked about practice-oriented. There's going to be some slides in this that I think that Hillary is going to talk about to show you our global learning community that you're becoming a part of. And also the word we use at Fielding is around competency-based. So you'll be getting feedback at the end of your courses, not only on the content of your papers or your presentations, but also on some doctoral competencies which prepare you to do the dissertation. 
So the founders were looking at advanced degrees for mid-career professionals, not only to give you information, but we also say that you're coming with a lot of information. You're coming with a lot of background. You're coming with a lot of skills. So you're not a blank slate, so to speak. We're enhancing that. You're already well established probably in your profession, a lot of you academically. So where do you want to push yourself and enhance that? So where do you want to make a difference? Where do you want to affect change? And then be part of a lifelong learning community. So over 45 or going into 46 years, Fielding has applied these kind of ideas, values, vision, mission, and founding principles to our education model. So now I'll turn it back over to Erica, who can talk more about the accreditation process and the kind of institution you're becoming part of. Thank you so much, Dr. Mink. Um, as, as she just mentioned, um, we've just celebrated our 46th birthday, and today we remain an accredited nonprofit leader in graduate education, and our values of learner-centered education and social justice remain centered in, in really everything we do. So um, as, as she has already kind of walked through our vision, mission, and values, we just wanted to kind of bring that all together and show where we are today um, and moving on from there. So thank you so much. Within the School of Psychology, as I mentioned, we have a School of Psychology and a School of Leadership Studies. Uh, so the programs that we offer within our School of Psychology are PhD in Clinical Psychology, um, which is the only APA accredited PhD in Clinical Psychology program that is offered in a hybrid model. We offer a PhD and a master's and a certificate in Media Psychology for those who are interested in how, te how technology influences our behaviors, uh, our attitudes and beliefs. Um, and depending on what level you're ready to pursue that, we offer the three different levels to, to study media psychology. We offer a PhD in infant and early childhood development with a focus on mental health. Um, within our certificates, we also offer a post-bachelorate certificate in clinical psychology. Uh, that really gives you the skills that you may need uh, to to bridge the gap between maybe some research experience uh, or some certain psychology coursework uh, that will allow you to be a competitive candidate for a PhD in clinical psychology program. We offer a postdoctorate certificate, re-specialization in clinical psychology, as well as a neuropsychology specialization training program. Within our School of Leadership Studies, uh, we offer EDD in Leadership for Change, uh, PhD in human development or organizational development and change. For those of you who may have completed uh, some doctoral work within the last five to eight years, uh, you may be eligible for a degree completion program that will allow you to uh, transfer a number of credits into the one of the doctoral programs. And then for certificates, we have two certificate options with evidence-based coaching, uh, and we have a certificate in organizational development and leadership. So we understand that this is not a decision you take lightly, whether you're looking at a graduate level certificate or a master's program or a doctoral program, um, it's, it's a big decision for you. And we're here to connect you with the support you need, with the resources you need to make sure that you have all of the information you need to make the best decision for yourself and for your future. Um, whether it's a deep dive into your goals or connecting you with program faculty or financial services, we are here to help throughout the entire process. So um, please feel free to reach out to us in admissions and advising at admissions at fielding.edu uh, or our number here, 805-898-4026. And my team is here to help um, with any questions that you may have. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lindsay Kahn to talk about the fielding experience. Thank you, Erica. Um, yes, I'm excited to talk about this. Um, Barbara mentioned a little bit about this before as well, is that um, we use a couple different words to describe our learning model, um, distributed, blended, um, hybrid, and, and they all sort of mean the same thing, which is that we do what we can to blend the best of in-person 
um, with the best of um, working independently from your uh, from your own place of choice. Um, and it's a really great way working doing school this way hasn't been an an option for for all that long, uh, although fielding's been around for a while. But it's particularly good now because people have communities that they are um, a part of, own homes in those communities, have families there, and just can't up and relocate to go to college in a college town. Um, so fielding tries to be the best of all of those things. Um, so this image is from one of our national sessions and we have um, three national sessions a year, although they're, they're all a little bit different. So in um, our winter session is in January and it is um, one week long and it's school specific. So the School of Psychology has one week and then the School of Leadership Studies has another week. So we keep the two schools separate at that at that session. Um, summer session is all schools. So we'll have one week where, where everyone is invited. And the last few years we've had that one in Chicago, um, which tends, we try and find places that are easy to get to, easy to fly into, um, easy to to navigate. And then in the fall, the clinical program has their own very small um, session that is um, just for picking up the, the classes in the clinical PhD program that require face-to-face -face attendance. Um, we also hold virtual Zoom-based um, cluster meetings and retreats, <clears throat> mini conferences and presentations throughout the year to keep people connected. Um, and, and engaged in their schoolwork. And Eric, I think you can go to the next slide. And then all of, most of the staff um, at Fielding are located in Santa Barbara, California. So, you know, we work ish nine to five Pacific time, but we have tried really hard to make sure that most anything that you need to know can be accessed 24 hours a day whenever you at home are trying to access that information. So starting with our um, academic technology, we have, we use Moodle, which is um, a widely used open source learning management system. And what that means is that Moodle is the platform where your courses will be set up. So for each course you take, there will be, um, a page that will have the syllabus and all the assignments. You may have um, discussion um, groups within that Moodle site. There's, um, there's a lot of options for how a faculty member can set up the Moodle site from very basic to very, very uh, intricate and complex. And so you'll get a variety of different um, things based on, on how the faculty feels about using this. Um, but that is one of your major resources. Uh, another major re resource that isn't on this list, but is we have a, um, a portal called My Fielding where we um, bring together all of the links and things that you need. Um, through My Fielding, you can access information about the program. You can also access um, Web Advisor Self Service, which is a way for you to access your academic records, um, your financial aid records, your um, student accounts records that are up to date and live in real time. Um, and then, as you see, we use Zoom. Um, we've been using Zoom for several years, but now it's become much more popular. Um, and every student gets a Zoom account so that you can set up your own meetings with fellow students, with faculty, with um, with anyone that you that you need to be able to communicate with. So we we provide you with the um, a, a platform for that. And then our online library is, is really spectacular. It's hosted through Moodle. Um, we have two librarians who are fantastic and available. Um, I think seven days a week, they have a schedule where you can chat in questions to them, you can email them, you can call them, and they'll help you navigate the online library. Um, the library itself has hundreds of thousands of resources, journals, articles, videos, different things. And if 
if by some chance there's a thing that you need that's not available in our library, then the librarians uh, will help you track it down and, and get you a copy. Um, so that is a really great resource and uh, anyone who's spoken to our librarians will say that they are the kindest and most generous uh, people that, that anyone's ever met. So take the next slide. All right. Oh, Thank and that's you, the Sandy. end of mine. Yeah. So if you have any <laughs> questions, sorry, I ended abruptly there, but if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'm happy to, um, to respond if I wasn't clear about something or if you have additional questions. Thanks, Erica. Wonderful. And now, uh, last but certainly not least, we're excited to turn it over to Hillary Molina to talk about the Alumni Association. Great. Thank you, Erica. Um, First, I have to share that I absolutely love my job. I get to work with graduates after they finish their degree, and they are the most inspiring people to work with every day, every week, uh, working with alumni, sharing and learning about their experiences is something that I'm really excited about. And to be able to share this with you is this is looking at your future once you graduate. I have so much to share and I hope this excites you. Uh, we have over 6,000 alumni worldwide in 56 countries. And it's exciting because our graduates stay very engaged following graduation, which is great for you because there are opportunities for students to interact with alumni on a variety of situations. President Rogers and Fielding Leadership is very committed to maintaining a strong, long-term relationship with alumni, which means you have a lot to look forward to at the completion of your degree. And in alumni relations, we work closely with academic leaders. For example, Dr. Barbara Meek and I meet often and discovering ways to develop how student and alumni events are surrounding uh, lifelong learning. So it's very exciting um, part of my job to stay connected on the academic side of the house, as we say. Next slide, please. So a couple of benefits I'd like to share that when you graduate, things that you continue to keep. First is the uh, a basic alumni library collection, which we talked about a little bit earlier in this presentation, is the Alumni Library Collection includes over 100,000 ebooks, 36,000 scholarly journals, which equals millions of articles, streaming clinical interview videos and dissertations across the globe. And uh, we're very proud that we offer that as part of the free membership um, as you're an alum. There's also some other things like you get to keep your field and email, which is fantastic for um, discounts on several um, offerings and businesses. And then just some fun things like uh, exclusive access to savings on hotels and movies and shows and concerts and theme parks and more. And plus we also have a continuing education program discount is once you receive your doctoral degree, you receive a discount on tuition for uh, academic certificate programs and continuing education. We, we like keeping you connected for lifelong learning. And then plus you also have a job board that's available to you as well. And what we encourage alums to do is stay connected and keep networking. As a part of the Alumni Association, which is free for life, you get to search this incredible alumni directory, which includes the most up-to-date list of engaged alumni, plus faculty, plus students and staff. You can search for alumni by program, the year they graduated, where they're located, you know, some folks even that are in, in your city, and searching for alums that also have similar interests, even by industry, for example, educational leadership, management consulting, high-tech medical, all sorts of psychology interests, just to name a few. And we're really excited that alumni are able to connect in this way across programs. Plus, you get a chance to contact alumni directory uh, through member messaging. And when you upgrade, there are so many more offerings in the Alumni Association, which includes a program called InfoEd Spin, which is the world's largest sponsored funding opportunity database with over 40,000 funding opportunities for more than 10,000 global sponsors. So that means you get to, get to continue your research and look for funding as well. And then in addition to the basic alumni library access, there is an upgraded uh, opportunity to, to access 
uh, what we call the extended alumni library. And as the word we used earlier is spectacular. And it's very close to what the student alumni offering uh, library is as well. So that's just part of the benefits that you get as an alum. One of the next opportunities is ways to stay engaged. We have so many events to offer to keep, in, keep you involved. For example, we have cluster events that faculty and students invite uh, alumni to not only attend, but to present. So it's a way to stay connected with students and faculty. And we also have regional events, which I'll talk about in the next slide. But as you'll see here on the screen, we have leadership that also travel. Our chief diversity officer earlier in the year traveled to uh, Minneapolis to speak about topics on um, diversity and inclusion. And this past year, we've had over 80 events that alumni are able to participate in. And actually, I think we're looking up closer to 90 because we're still adding some more events as they come along. So you get to in involve, be involved in events across programs and the Alumni Association offers this for you. And the next slide I'm excited to talk about, a little bit more to share here, but as an alum, there are so many opportunities about ways to stay involved. As you heard about earlier, winter and summer session, you're still invited as alums to come and attend session, which includes academic offerings and even alumni exclusive events and the fun events like going wine tasting in Santa Barbara. We also are very proud of the alumni awards that we offer to continue your research. Just recently, we had an alum who started her own alumni award program and offers sister and this award is to support graduates in the area of health education we have several others that uh, i can share at a later time but just know that there are opportunities and funding to continue your research following graduation we also have this incredible institute for social which president rogers started years ago and we call it isi the ISI supports research, professional development, and organizational consulting progress projects that build human capital and sustainable change. And the ISI Fellows Program, which you can join as you graduate, offers alumni an academic partner to continue your professional work, apply for external funding, and publicize your project. We also offer the opportunity to be involved in a couple of groups. One is the Fielding Sustainability Work Group, which is a consulting group to the, uh, to the president. We also have the Alonzo Center for Psychodynamic Studies, which is available for all programs, all alumni. And it brings together psychiatrists, educators, writers, and artists to help strengthen the understanding and support for adaptive and resilient human relationships. The Diversity Inclusion Council is an advisory group providing guidance to the president on issues pertaining to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We also offer continuing education credit webinars, credit-bearing APA clinical psychology webinars, and evidence-based coaching webinars that provide continuing education units. Another opportunity is we have our own Fielding University Press and we publish academic books across a variety of disciplines. And this includes alumni offers, uh, alumni authors. And the last is you get the opportunity to present at sessions. You can be on panels, you can participate in alumni webinars, and a lot of opportunities to co-present with faculty. And last but not least, which is my exciting point to share with all of you as students, you can join the Alumni Association on your first day, which means you get to take part of a variety of benefits, including the alumni directory, including the research searches, and being able to met, um, contact alumni directly. And alumni indicate on their profile if they're willing to connect with students so you know who would be willing to talk with you ahead of time and also know what their interests are. So you get to start collecting, uh, connecting with alumni right now. And my role here is to help you connect with alumni. And that is my short version of all of the alumni offerings. But students, please know that we can we look at you as an alum the first day that you graduate, because that is what you get to look forward to. And we want you to be a part of the community of day one. And thank you so much. And back to Erica.
Hillary, thank you so much for sharing that wonderful information about our incredible, spectacular, to use your word, alumni. So today you have heard from the admission side, you've heard about what it's like to be a current student, you've heard about our alumni. Um, there, there are three major aspects of finding the right fit, the right place, the right program, and the right time. So hopefully today it's given you some insight into who we are and helping to figure out if this might be the right place for you. And that's really all about the culture, the community. Does it feel like home for you? You know, the next thing is finding, making sure you find the right program. Is this program actually going to allow you to uh, achieve the goals that you've set for yourself? And that's something that you can find out through attending our information sessions uh, or speaking with our advisors and faculty. And then the last is, is the right time. And that's a very personal thing for you to understand, but we're, we're also here to help you with that. Our faculty are here to talk to you about that. Our admissions advisors are here to help you with that. We want to make sure that it is the right fit, the right program, the right place, the right time. So we thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we hope this has given you some insight, deeper insight into who we are and helping you determine if we might be the right fit. <laughs>